Welcome to our lecture online. Solving a system of linear equations really comes down to following these six steps. Now, one of them may not be necessary, which is step number four, find the points of intersection. But typically, when you're finding a region on an xy plane and that region is crisscrossed by some lines and you're looking for a region between those lines, it's sometimes important that you know where those lines cross in order to get a good feel for where that region is and what the endpoints or corner points are of the region. If you don't find the, the places where those lines cross, you don't know what the corner points are. So it depends how much they expect you to figure out. But at least those are the six steps that we should follow to solve a system of linear inequalities and that's the system we're going to solve. So the first thing they tell us to do is to find the equations representing the boundaries of the regions we're looking for and that's the easiest step of them all. All we need to do is take the inequality symbols and simply change them to equal signs. So step number one, we write this as 2x plus y equal to 40 and we write x plus 3y equal to 15. It's as simple as that. But it's a necessary step because it allows us to find those boundaries. Now, in order for us to graph them, we should do step number two, which is write the equations into the y equals to mx plus b format. So what we do here is we move the 2x to the other side and we end up with, and also it's not a bad idea to label the equations, equation number one, equation number two, for inequality number one and inequality number two. So it's not a bad idea to label them all the way through to keep, to keep track of them. So here we're going to move the 2x to the other side, so we have y equals minus 2x plus 40, which is equation number 1, and here we move the x to the other side, divide everything by 3, we get y is equal to minus 1 third x plus 5. 15 divided by 3 is 5, and a negative 1 divided by 3 is a negative 1 third, so that's equation number 2. All right, now we're ready to graph the boundaries on the xy plane, so step number 3, we draw the xy axis, here's our y axis, there's our x axis, and now we can graph them, but notice that if the original inequality had a greater than or equal to, or a less than or equal to, you want to draw the boundary with a solid line because it includes the boundary. If it doesn't have the equal sign, simply just a greater than or smaller than like this, or less than, then you draw a dashed line because that means that the boundary is not included in the solution. Okay, uh, let's graph the first one, y equals negative 2x plus 40, so 10, 20, 30, 40, negative 2, 10, 20, so the line goes from this point to this point, so let's try to draw a straight line like this. There we go, there's our first line, of course I tried to avoid hitting the 20, and that kind of messed me up, there we go. And the next line, we're going to draw a dashed line because it doesn't include the equals, equal uh, sign. Uh, plus 5, which is right here, and minus a third. And so, well, let's see here. We're not quite sure where that goes. So, um, okay, now what we should do is we should label these lines. So this is line number 1. And this here is line number 2. And that comes in really handy later when we try to do the test points. So next what we should do, of course I'm assuming that I do this correctly, I don't know if I did or not, now we're going to find the points of intersection and we do that by setting y of the first equation equal to y of the second equation. So this is y1 so to speak and this is y2, so when we set those equal to each other we set the right sides of the two equations equal to each other. So step number four, we're going to write that minus 2x plus 40 is equal to minus one third x plus five. Now of course to get rid of that, uh, that uh, fraction we're going to multiply both sides of the equation by five, uh, not by five but by three, like this, which means we get minus six x plus one twenty is equal to minus x plus fifteen. Move all the x's to one side so we have minus six x plus x is equal to 15 minus 120 or minus 5x is equal to minus 105 divide both sides by negative 5 and we get x is equal to 21. So if x is equal to 21 
and we plug that into one of our two equations right here. So we say down that y is equal to negative 2 times 21 plus 40, which is negative 2, or y is equal to negative 2. So if we take a look here, the point of intersection is just past the 20 point and 2 below the x-axis. It's actually not a bad guess in my drawing there, so that the point of intersection is 21 comma negative 2. We may need it, we may not need it, but it gives you an interesting point. The next thing we do is we want to take, and this is the real method to find the region. Notice we have four regions again, one, two, three, four regions. Only one of those four regions will satisfy the two inequalities at the same time. What we do is we pick a test point right here, the test point 0, 0, if it's available. None of the lines go through that point, so it's a good point. And so we're going to pick a test point and see if the regions satisfy or not satisfy the inequalities. So step number five is the real big step in this method. So we we'll plug in 0, 0 for the first equation. Is 0 greater than negative 40? So essentially, we end up with 0 plus 0 greater than or equal to 40 question mark and of course the answer is no which means we picked a point relative to line number one that is not in the region that satisfies inequality it's the other side that does so we're going to get rid of the side that does not satisfy the inequality so we've gotten rid of the two of the four regions we still have two regions left that could satisfy so now we go to equation number two and again, we plug in 0, 0 for x and y. So 0 plus 0 is that greater than 15 question mark. And the answer again is no. So again, relative to the second line, we picked a point that is not in the correct region. So we're going to get rid of that side of the second line like this. And notice there's only one region left that is not being crossed out. And so that's the region that satisfies both of the inequalities at the same time. Now I made one mistake. Where's the mistake? Notice I drew a solid line for the second inequality and I don't have an equal sign there. So essentially I need to turn that into a dashed line. So I didn't follow my own instructions right here in point number three. So I want to turn that into a dashed line because this line is not included in the solution, but the solid line there is. So we have a solid line here. We have a dashed line here and this region. So the line and the region and not that line is included in the solution. So point number six, we shaded away the regions that do not satisfy. So first of all, the left side of line number two, the bottom side of line number three, uh, number uh, again, the left side of line number one, the bottom of line number two, and the only one that's not shaded then becomes the solution to our set or system of linear inequalities. And so that's how we follow the six steps. Of course, I didn't follow my own step here. Make sure that if it's not equal to that we draw a dashed line instead of a solid line and then shade away everything that does not belong. And what's left is the region that satisfies both of the inequalities in our initial set. And that is how it's done. That's why I like to keep the inequalities through that way. I can see the inequality immediately. Yeah, it's, um, I go back to it once I begin to shade, once I, I begin to check. I like to just follow it through. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have. Uh, show that as an option in one of the examples? Let me think about it. Let me, let me work it. And then you could also mention the, the disadvantage of doing that. The line is yeah. really flat. Or sometimes, sometimes it's hard to see which one. And the, re the reason why I like this method, it gives you a solid, systematic way of getting the answer and you don't have to worry about it. It always works. Right. And that's what I like about this method. I mean, you could still substitute in a dot. Yes, you can. And then check at the end, but then that's what this does in the first place. Yeah, but then you know, if you're not sure, then you do it. Yeah, let, let me do this one and take your method, and I think that might be a good way to uh, to counterbalance it.